Welcome back. Last time we set up a core lightning node, and learned how to back it up, properly. Today, I will discuss Blockstream's unique approach of implementing core lightning, based on, plugins. It is a smart way of designing a lightning node, plugins allow anyone to build applications on top of it, without wasting core development resources that are better employed on the base functionalities of the node itself. It is early days still, and you will find that many of the available plugins, are there just to illustrate this open modular architecture. To show what kinds of things are possible to build, without having to ask core developers for new features. The specifics of this issue might not be as sexy as connecting your mobile wallet to your node, but this is one of the features that make Core Lightning, superior, in my opinion. So hang in there, knowledge of this stuff, is worth having. In the second part of this video, I will show you how to set up, an NFS server, that will allow you to remotely back up the channel states of your Core Lightning node, in another computer within your local network. And yes, we will use a plugin to manage the backup. Let's go! On this GitHub page, you will find some of the earliest plugins built around Core Lightning. Many of them are not maintained anymore, and others are being rewritten in other repositories. These plugins just demonstrate the concept, and it is up to third parties to develop relevant plugins for solving a specific issue. In the next video of this series, I will use one such plugin for setting up the node manager, Ride the Lightning. Take a look at what's in here. Read the description of each plugin, so you can get an idea of what they can do. The plugins that provide the basic functionalities that you've come to expect from a Lightning node, are already installed by default in the core Lightning software that we built from source. Additional plugins, provide additional features that you might be interested in. So, for the purpose of testing, let's download this whole repo of plugins, and I'll show you how to manage them in your node. There's different ways of doing this, but this is my favorite. First, I will stop my lightning node, and dump all the plugins in a directory called Plugins Available, inside Core Lightning's data directory. Next to it, I will create the directory, Plugins Enabled, which is where I will place those plugins I want to run. So these are my available plugins. Let's choose one to install. How about Summary? Your typical plugin page will describe what the plugin does, installation requirements, if any, and basic information about the usage. This plugin in particular might not look very impressive to you, but look at what's going on here. By installing it, you can expand the command, Lightning Clean with a brand new method that was not available before. Summary. That expands the capabilities of your node. So let's go through the process of installing this plugin. First there's that requirements text file, that typically includes a few Python modules that you should install. We will get those, with the command, pip. Now is when things get a little messy with these particular plugins. As I said, the README and requirement files are not always up to date. You might encounter some errors, usually complaining about missing modules. I'm going to install a bunch of modules that will avoid some errors, but not all. I want you to feel comfortable solving these issues yourself. We'll deal with those when they show up, later on. Okay. We have installed all the requirements for this plugin to work. Before we activate it, we need to specify a plugin directory, in our core lightning configuration file. That directory is, plugins enabled.
to activate a plugin, just copy the Python script that bears the name of the plugin, into this directory. I could just copy the file, summary.py, restart core lightning, and the plugin would be activated. But instead, I'm going to create a symbolic link to it. This way, whenever there's an update, I only have to overwrite the plugin's available directory, with the latest release. Ready to restart core lightning. To print to screen a list of activated plugins, type Lightning Clean Plugin List. And there it is. Summary. Let's look again at the usage and test it. My node doesn't have any channels, so this is even less impressive. But you get the idea. We have successfully installed a Core Lightning plugin. To uninstall the plugin, I will stop Core Lightning, remove the file from the plugin's directory, and restart Core Lightning. Summary is gone. OK. Let's try another plugin. Last time, we already learned how to manage our backups. But I find this plugin useful, as a way to keep simultaneous backups in two locations. A requirements file, and usage below. Instructions to initialize the plugin, and a one-liner to restore the backup. Please, read these instructions. It is a cool plugin, and you should install it, permanently. There it is. Backup. Oh well. We were promised a requirements file, but there ain't one. Let's keep going with the installation anyway. I will stop Core Lightning and add the Python script backup to our plugin directory. To initialize the backup, I need to use the provided command, backup CLI, and specify the location of the backup file. The path to the core lightning data directory is correct. And for now, I will place the backup file, at home. And I get an error. Not to worry. At least, now I know which Python module should have been included in the missing requirements file. And try again. It worked now. I will restart Core Lightning. Look closely. We get another error. It seems that we are missing another Python module after all. I'll press Ctrl C to cancel, and fix that, first. Let's try again. I will list my plugins. The backup plugin is installed. And there is my backup file, at home. This backup is equivalent to the one I set up in the last video. Both these methods will keep track of your channel state changes in real time. Therefore, it is a good idea to keep them as far away as possible from the main disk where your core lightning resides, to guard against a disk failure or even a power loss that can corrupt your database. Last time, we made sure to backup into a high quality USB drive. It is not perfect, but it is better than just backing up into a different location on the same physical disk. Now that we are running a second process that independently generates real-time backups, we can greatly improve their reliability by backing up on a different computer within our local network. To do this, you will need another Linux machine. I have mine ready. So before I move computers, let me get the IP address of this machine. I will need it. It is 192 168 192.
I am going to install a network file system server. The NFS protocol allows computers to share files between them. It is very easy to set up. You only need to install the NFS server package and edit a config file. So let's begin. On the server side, install NFS kernel server. The NFS server is enabled by default. Now I need to decide which directory the server is going to share with NFS clients. I will create a directory at home, called, Lightning, Backup. The NFS server's configuration file is at, etc, exports. You need to write one line for every directory that you share. This IP range would grant access to any computer on my local network. Instead, I will authorize only my core lightning machine. Now give the directory, read, write, permissions. And add the option, no, subtree, check. Restart the NFS server, and you are done. Before we go back to our core lightning node, we need to do two things. First, learn the IP where the NFS server is, 192.168.133. And second, allow incoming traffic on the port where the NFS server is listening, which is, port 2049. Let's add a reel to the firewall, which will allow any machine in our local network to access that port. Finished. On the client side, install the package, NFS, common. And there's no more to it than that. Now I can mount on this machine, the lightning backup directory that I created on the server. I will use the directory public for that. Although you can use any directory that you want. It is empty. I don't use it. So it's perfect for remote backups. So, I want to mount, the lightning backup directory, sitting on our NFS server, into my home subdirectory, public. If I list my file systems, the last line shows the volume that I just mounted. Ok. Back to core lightning. I'm going to change the backup location. See if you can follow along. Everything seems to work correctly. Let's move to our NFS server and see if the backup is there. Here it is. How cool is that? Let me show you one final hack. I want my system to mount the remote NFS shared volume, automatically, on boot. We can do this, just adding one line to the file, F stab at etc type the location of the volume the mount point nfs defaults 0 0 save exit and test it by restarting your computer The volume is already mounted.
everything works correctly. Now that you have the basics figured out, next time I will show you how to install an Node Manager to control Core Lightning from a nice graphical user interface. The amazing Ride the Lightning.